Hi everybody, my name is Aaron. I'm with PubSafe and uh, this is a quick video to show you some of the improvements that we have made to the contact manager inside of the web portal. Uh, many NGOs, CERT groups, FBOs operate off of spreadsheets of different uh, flavors. So we put a contact manager inside of the PubSafe portal where you can now consolidate your contacts, both volunteers, uh, members, uh, network contacts, you know, government officials and things like that that you're in contact with and be able to share that through a web portal versus a spreadsheet, which could uh, potentially disappear uh, or something happen to uh, if somebody were to leave the organization. So this helps protect your information. So first thing you want to do is you want to go to pubsafe.net and then you want to go to the login screen, as you see here. Uh, the login credentials are the same as your mobile app, right? So if you are with an organization and you want to try this out, uh, you can create a free account. The web portion's uh, completely free. Uh, you can uh, get the PubSafe mobile app from either Android or iOS, log in uh, on the free version, upgrade to Pro, and then come create an account under Join Organizations, follow a couple steps, and you can get a, you know, a free account, get in, take a look, and actually start using if you want to, or just try it out for a while and see if you like it, see if it's going to be good for you. Uh, you know, we're obviously constantly doing updates, and the idea that we have is to uh, enable organizations to be able to uh, run their entire organization from the PubSafe portal. So um, we are going to continue to add features and functionality that uh, facilitate that for you, make it better, faster, and more efficient to do business inside of the PubSafe platform. So once you log in, you'll see the home map, then you want to move down to Contact Manager, click on this. The first thing you'll notice is the new layout. Uh, we organized a lot of information. It's a lot easier to read. Uh, we improved some of the filtering functions where you can uh, go through the same list of skills or experience or resources that uh, are required when you sign up as a, uh, as a responder in pro mode. Uh, so you can filter by those things. So if you have a large organization, let's say you've got a thousand members, you can find everybody that's experienced in Civil Air Patrol or who is a boat captain, and you can do that very, very quickly. And you don't have to thumb through a spreadsheet or something like that. You can also come down here and you can sort information either by account or by user. Uh, we have the option of showing either accounts, contact members, users, or volunteers. And I'll point out real quickly that we have an automated onboarding process for volunteers where uh, on the website, they can go to volunteer registration up here. Every organization gets a, um, a unique link. And when somebody fills that out, it, they actually put the volunteers straight into the contact manager inside of your organization. So you do not have to double entry, enter anything. It goes straight into your account. You can share that URL on, uh, on your social media and, and use it as a way of collecting up volunteers. So keep that in mind. It's a very, very efficient way of expanding your volunteer base. Once they're in the system, then you can start communicating with them. So if we look down here, we've got a couple different options for um, uh, individuals. And we'll just look at Daryl. So I can, you know, uh, I can click on this icon. I can view his last known location on the map. If Daryl is sharing his location information uh, with PubSafe, you obviously don't have to. You can be completely invisible. So just keep that in mind. We can also click this icon. And it brings up this little window. And now we can message Daryl directly from here. He'll get a notification in his mobile app. Uh, hey, you've got a message. He can reply and we can have a chat conversation right here through the web portal. Don't need to go outside and get a different platform. You know, everybody's got something different. You got to install this, you got to do that. It all happens between the app and the portal. And uh, because we have that direct one-to-one -one connection, we can do a lot with that as far as speed, reliability, and also keeping track of all that messaging. Um, we actually have a a report that keeps all that chat log history. So you may not need it right away, you know, maybe six months from now, you need to go back and look. You can look at all that chat history uh, that was that was part of that. You can also select multiple people and do some uh, group editing that way, but you can also uh, message multiple users. So if you wanted to message your entire organization, whether it be three people or 3,000 people, you can check the box and everybody that's um, you know, set up in here, you could send a message to, and they would get that message in what we have seen globally in less than five seconds. We've got developers uh, offshore, and when we run this test, they're instantly getting those messages. So if you're like an international uh, NGO, and you've got people all over the world, and you want to send company communication, 
Uh, there's no extra charge for the messaging capabilities that we have because we own both ends, the portal and the, uh, the mobile app. Uh, you can send invites out to volunteers. Uh, you can create new contacts. You can create new accounts, which would be, you know, maybe it's your local, um, you know, um, animal shelter and you want to add them to the system. You can do that and then they become a contact inside of your contact information. So uh, let's go ahead and click on somebody. Let's click on Daryl so we can edit him. And we did quite a bit of expanding this section to encompass more things that we are getting told are important to keeping track of, of people and members. So um, first of all, you can add a photo, which helps identify somebody visually. If somebody calls in and asks the dispatcher, hey, what does this guy look like? You know, I'm not quite sure this is the right guy. You have a picture that you can reference, right? We can go down, we can get into these sections, and this is all new information down here. So we can have a complete uh, status of you know this individual, whether a citizen, a responder, or a volunteer, and then that allows us to do some additional filtering. We can do addresses. Uh, assets are exactly what you would think. You know what assets do they have? Uh, when you sign up as a responder, we ask you, what do you have? Do you have a boat? Do you have a um, an airboat or a rubber boat or an airplane or a drone or things like that. That information gets here so the dispatchers can check that information and uh, we can do some sorting and filtering of that information here. So uh, that's very handy. We also have a section for emergency contacts. Uh, this is often overlooked, but if you're deploying and uh, you're going into a dangerous situation, um, really every every member of your organization have, should have emergency contact info. Uh, sometimes you don't see the hazards coming and you know they can reach out and bite you so uh, good place to keep it dispatch again centrally managed online uh, any any uh, dispatcher can get into this area and take a look next is media what assets uh, do they have and what do they look like now it can be more than just the assets uh, it can be other things that are important to you it could be a vehicle you know if it's just a vehicle that you're driving with a license plate number that you want to be able to share with the local sheriff's office if you're parked somewhere or you you know hey we found a vehicle we think it's yours you can go in here and you look at it and you can say oh yeah is it a blue chevy or is it a black sherp yes okay there we go that's one of ours next is you can add notes and in the notes section you can type anything that you want right and that's very handy uh, to be able to document things that are going on you know, maybe uh, there was an incident and you want to document that, or uh, maybe you had a conversation and you need to make a note about that. Uh, that kind of information could go in here, so you can reference again in the future. And then the last section that we added is for training and certi certificates. Um, you know, you need a place to, to document who completed what training, and it can go in here. Uh, we will eventually be able to take some of this information out and put training and certificates into reports. So you'd be able to run a report and look at everybody inside the organization. Right now you've got to go in here. So it's important that you get this in here and you can add as many of these records as you want. Just click on new, you get this little form and you fill it out. So that is the, uh, you know, the update with the latest changes to the PubSafe contact manager. Uh, if you are looking to get your organization organized and have a platform to run it on, uh, please check out PubSafe. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. If you would like a web demo, contact us and we'll run you through this. Otherwise, you can just uh, go in, like I said, go to join organizations, follow a few steps there and you can create an account and you can get in and you can start playing, you know, play around, try things out and see what's going to work for you. If you got suggestions, please let us know if we're missing something. We'd be glad to look at adding more features and functions based on uh, specific field requirements. Thank you and we'll talk soon.